Ah, that intro gets me so how, hyped. How do you not get hyped up? Let's by go. That? That's I'm ready. Crazy. Oh, wow. guys, good good day. As I say, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're watching uh, and listening. Of course, it is me, Dave Shaw. This is Wall Street to Britain, and I am joined back with my good friend Alex Carr. Alex, how are you, my man? After that, after that intro, I'm I'm feeling pretty good. I'm ready for where's April? Let's I'm go. Back, yeah, let's, <laughs> yes, I'm done. Spring training, I'm done. Let's get an opening day. I'm 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 ready for it right now. Uh happy belated birthday, Alex. Oh, sir, you're so sweet. Thank how, you very how, much. How was the birthday celebrations? Honestly, it was spent mostly traveling, which was uh, you know, not the most fortunate thing. But uh I you know, it was a great birthday. I got to spend it with family and, and with my partner, and that's all you can really ask for these days. That's so all, yeah. That's so all you good. can ask for. Twenty six. So Twenty. Is that it? I feel is old. That <laughs> it? I'm thirty seven yeah. this year, buddy. Thirty seven. You don't look it though. Come on oh. now. Oh, I know. I try. It's it's catching up. It's catching up. The gray oh, hairs are creeping on. in. Uh right. At last, we can talk baseball, Alex. We've had a week of spring training, meaningless to some, not to us, because it's baseball on our screens. We love it. And yes, let's not dive into spring tra uh, spring train stats too much, but we can't help ourselves. Look, we're getting a good look at the the youngsters. Uh, we've got a rotation. Uh, well, a rotation fight. We'll get to painter. We've got a bullpen fight for for places. That's looking interesting. A bench true. spots. They're looking interesting. We'll get into all that and review. What's been a decent week? First week for the fields. Everyone, well, I was going to say, everyone staying healthy. Ugh. All right, let's get a painter. Painter's first outing was was excellent. That that I couldn't help but think that first inning where he was throwing hard, throwing hard, 98, 99, painting the <laughs> excuse the pun, but painting the corners, looking great. You could tell he was fighting for that rotation spot. I can't help but feel he's gone a little bit too hard, and we still await the injury news. Alex, what was your impressions on Painter's first outing, and now what's come from it? I mean, what was, I think the most important thing to take away from that outing was he faced mostly major league hitters. Um, and, and, you know, anytime you can get a literal 19 year old uh, to, to, to get up there against, you know, major league vets, that's always a great opportunity. Um, I mean, he, he looked like Andrew Painter. He looked like the guy that, you yeah. know, everybody's raving about. And there's a reason they rave about him uh, because he just has unbelievable stuff for his age. Um, you know, I'm not sure what this recent development development means for his chances of cracking the opening day roster and, you know, so on. But I do know that what we saw from him the other day was, was really, really encouraging. Um, you know, again, anytime you can get a guy like that in front of major league hitters, that is already, you know, so far ahead of where he's supposed to be. Um, so, you know, I, I was so impressed, but I've, I've seen a lot of him over the last year or so. Uh, so nothing necessarily surprising. No, I, like I was going back through the record books of, of great pitchers who have come up when they were this young. Uh, what, Kershaw, Hernandez. There's not many of them. Uh, there I are not Scherzer, a lot. I think Scherzer was also about 19, 20. I know he was very young, but. I, I think maybe he was later. Verlander was young. Verlander, Verlander was a year, yeah, he, a yeah, year after the draft. I think Scherzer was a bit of a late bloomer, if I recall. But but Verlander, he, Verlander was a year. He took one year in the minors, and then he was him, which is insane. But yeah, yeah there there aren't many. There aren't many, and that's why Mick Abel and Andrew Painter both received Verlander comps when they were, you know, it's still in high school because they were guys that were just so seemingly so far ahead of the curve yeah. and and you know here they are which is crazy yeah and hopefully and, and hopefully it's just the phil's being extra cautious on painter hopefully no surgery just shut him down for spring and it's it's not necessarily crucial to have him in the early part of the season whenever he comes in whenever he's ready he's still going to be a massive plus to this phil's rotation He's going to allow runs. You know, he's going to, if you can get an ERA of 3.5, 4, you know, it's, for, for a fifth starter, that's still great. You know, that, the, that, that's still better than what we've had. The paramount thing is that he stays healthy. That yeah. is paramount to anything else. And and obviously, you know, 
we have no idea what is what is going on behind these closed doors. We pray that you know nothing is too serious. Um, and yeah, again, I, a right. bunch of people tweeted yesterday. You know, this is just what the Phillies do. They're always cryptic about this stuff. It's true. They are always cryptic. Um, so I would not overreact until we have news to overreact to. That being said, um, you know, the, the paramount thing is that this is hopefully not a serious injury because all you want from Andrew Painter, regardless of whether or not he's on the major league staff, uh, is, is that he stays healthy. That's all you want. So fingers crossed. Yeah. And if, if it means it, like I said, if it means him shutting down for spring, fine, fine. Just get him. He gets here when he gets here. You know, he's 19. He's already yeah. way ahead of schedule for a lot of prospect pitches and you know pl- players and pitches of before him who've been and been on to be greats so, you know he's way ahead of time it'll be a bonus for me it'll be a massive bonus to even see him on the opening day roster but i i really was just want us to bring him in when he's nice and ready you know even if it's like june july it's still going to be a big impact to the back end of that rotation especially in a time when we really need it so fingers crossed we're praying we're praying that painter is, is all good it's just uh, airing on the side of caution. That is all from the fills. Uh, quickly in the rotation, we've seen uh, Nola, Wheeler. Uh, no Suarez yet. And he goes off to the um, World Baseball Classic soon. What's the latest with Suarez? Uh, nothing of note as far as I'm aware. I mean, we would have heard if there were an issue or if there were, mm. you know, something going on. So I'm assuming he's probably just, you know, pitching extra, extra bullpens again. Important to remember that as a guy that was worked pretty hard in the postseason, they're probably taking it a little slower with him. Um, I'm sure, you know, he will be ready to go uh, at the start of the year, barring some unforeseen thing. But again, you know, last year, obviously, he had visa issues, um, which is now the issue for Gregory Soto. Uh, which Yeah. I just wish these things would not happen. But, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's how it works, I guess. Um I'm sure we would we would know if there were something going on. So I, I'm sure everything's okay. Um, you know, obviously we've seen Nola, we've seen Wheeler, we've seen Walker, uh, we've seen Falter. Um, so you know, at least four fifths of those guys are, are are gonna be mostly ready to go. Not to say that Suarez won't be, but you know, we haven't seen him yet. So who's to say? No, uh, uh, Wheeler's going again today against the Jays. Yeah. Wheeler looks already in just he, he's ready Both to go yeah, already isn't he? Look great. <laughs> you know already high high 90s Kamal looks great I, I reckon this could be a huge year for for Zach Wheeler again if you can keep him fully healthy all year fingers crossed because this time last year he was fighting shoulder issues wasn't quite fully healthy going into the the beginning of last season now fully healthy yes yeah, shortened off-season break granted with the World Series but with a new pitch with it, I was going to bring it up. Dave got him into this new slur. What is this curveball slider? This, this, what, what is it? When I first saw it, because uh, I'm not, I'm not technical or anything. You know, I don't know what, you know, what I'm looking for. But I was like, whoa, what is, what was that? You know, I get a sweeper. Uh, look, it's a twelve six. It's, it's quick. I like it. It, I, I don't know where this pitch has been, but what's really great about it is the way that it tunnels with his cutter because. His cutter always gets called a slider, but it is definitely a cutter. Um, yeah. the, but the way that it should tunnel theoretically, because the, the, the cutter is a really small 12-6 drop, and then this new pitch is a deep one, which is pretty cool to see. So I, I'm, I'm interested in seeing how they utilize that, but it theoretically should tunnel really well with his arsenal. And Absolutely. that, honestly, for me, is, is, is pretty exciting. I think that will generate quite a few whiffs uh, if he can master it, which it looks like he has, he was, he's been commanding it really well. Today is going to be a really good insight into that. I have a feeling we'll see that pitch a lot. Yeah. Against a pretty good Jays lineup as well, from what I've seen as well. So good, good test for Zach Wheeler early on. Yeah. Nola, Nola, we know what we're getting from Aaron Nola. Uh, walk. Yeah. From our regulars, we sort of know what we're getting. Uh, bullpen's interesting. Uh, a lot of names that I don't recognize that I've enjoyed. I've enjoyed following. I tell you who's taking my eye. Uh, Connor Brogdon, first off, I think he's having. It's only a week. I don't know. Not allowed a hit. Ourselves, but he hasn't allowed a run yet. He's looking solid. In hasn't allowed a hit, Dave. Hasn't allowed. Yeah, hasn't allowed a hit. Sorry, hasn't allowed a hit. Hasn't allowed a run. Hasn't. He's just been perfect. Spring, spring perfect so far. I know it's early days, but Connor Brogdon to have him as well, really coming into the new season, looking 
as good as he could be with Alvarado, Sir Anthony, Kim Rule. Um, <laughs> it's just, it gets you excited, right? And Connor Brogdon, big guy. As, is really, this this is a big year for Connor as well. He's had a couple of years to come up. He looked better at the tail end of last year. Started spring good. I'm ex- I'm excited for Connor Brogdon this year from what I've seen so far. Who have I got? I've got Marte, MacArthur, Plasemeyer, and Andrew Vasquez. Like, who's this guy? <laughs> this guy looks funky. I like him just? a lot. Six uh, six Ks in the three innings he's pitched so far. Andrew Vasquez, yeah, what a what a pitcher he looks so far. Where, where's he been? Um, so he was. I don't know if you remember at the towards the end of last year they claimed him on waivers uh, from the Blue Jays. I think um, they 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 claimed him on waivers and then they DFA'd him, but then reclaimed him from the Orioles, I believe, um, because the Orioles were churning through so many forty man guys, just hoping to stash somebody, and they ended up doing it. Uh, with Lewin Diaz, uh, who, you know, uh, was a Marlins prospect for a long time. Um, but they, they ended up stashing him. But, yeah, Vasquez just kept getting passed around. He was kind of on that DFA train. Um, but they they made it a point to hang on to him. Um, so I, I have a feeling they really like what he's doing. That being said, there's already, you know, a litany of lefties uh, in the Phillies bullpen, especially if Andrew Painter yeah. makes, the, uh, makes the opening day roster. You've got... Bailey Falter, Matt Strom, Jose Alvarado, and Gregory Soto, who hopefully will be ready for opening day, but who is to say at this point? Um, but it is really interesting. Um, he is very funky, Andrew Vasquez is. Um, and I, I, I really like what I've seen. That being said, uh, I'm not sure how great his chances are at making the opening day roster, but that's the thing. Like, you look at some of these guys that they have managed to pick up on the fringes here, Junior Marte being, you know, ahead of the pack. Yeah, having that arm. Him. Oh my gosh, having that arm as, a, as a, not even a lock to make your opening day bullpen is wild to me. Um, and and just seeing how far uh you know this this team has come over the last couple of years, um, it's it's pretty pretty sweet to see. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but especially you know Junior Marte, Vasquez in the back, all these guys, you know. Uh, the opening day bullpen is going to look like with Soto's visa issues and, you know, with hopefully no serious news about Andrew Painter, but who's to say what it's going to look like, but you got so many choices. I mean, there's so many you really guys, to, yeah, you so really many guys to pick from here. So it, it, it's a good problem to have. It was that uh, you were close. You were tr- blue Jays and the Giants. It's, it's a blue team. It, it, oh, yeah. oh, Giants. Yeah. Was Giants. The Orioles? Yeah. Oh, I got the one so, that I oh, it's still an orange I team. Do. One that I thought I knew wrong, and then the one that I <laughs> wasn't sure about right. That's funny. Well, there you go. It makes sense. They target guys from the Giants all the time. Um, so that, that makes a lot of sense. What, you're right, though, in the, how far we've come because every time, and we've had bullpen injuries in the last few years badly. You know, we've had to scrape up everyone we found from the minors to, to come up and cover. But this year, looking at these guys, early days, I know, but there's some promise there and they're all very similar characteristics. They're throwing the ball hard. They've got good, they're like good commands. You know, the, 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 the coaching again is, is just unbelievable. What they're doing to these pitchers right now. I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm happy in the knowledge knowing if Soto doesn't start, we've got some guys here who can, who can come in and cover and do a nice job until we get the regulars back. And it's, we've got depth. <laughs> Dare I say it? Yeah. We've got bullpen depth. Right here, some young guys. Vasquez, I think, is 29. But, you know, it, what to me, these guys are pitching like they want a bullpen spot. You know, they want to go straight in. You know, Appel, Mark Appel, um, straight in. You know, he he's he's probably on the verge of potential bullpen spot. We saw the first of Abel, uh, scoreless inning, sort of got what we expected out of Abel. I was happy. You know, I was. we've seen one, in, one inning out of him so far. Look, night. Nice. The stuff's there for sure. The stuff is there. Um, Griff, uh, you know, throw wasn't wasn't that the was first so thing we were hoping for. That was so tough. I'm, I'm, it, yeah, I'm, it, hey, it's spring. A little know. sad, but it's spring. It's spring. It's spring. No, yeah. I mean, like, look, the the ultimate thing with Griff is going to be will the control, you know, come along? And yeah, it yeah. was not there that day. It just simply wasn't. So. That's going to be, the, but the stuff is undeniable. And that, so in the end, 
we've seen it. We've seen it with the Phillies and Jose Alvarado. We've seen it with the Phillies and, you know, all these guys. that they've, they've picked stuff over command and look at where it led them last year. So that's that's all that really needs to be said about that. Exactly. And for people watching and listening who don't regularly listen to the show, if we're doing bad, it's spring. It's only spring. If we're doing well, Cy Young. We're yeah, going to exactly. be a Cy Young. You know, cool, <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, uh, Placid Meyer, I've liked him. Now, could he, if Painter doesn't make the rotation, do you think Pla- – I think Placid Meyer could be an outside bet for a back-end rotation spot. I would say probably not just because they do have – because the, the rotation is, is full at this point, right? So you've got you've got Wheeler and Nola at the top. You've got Ranger, who hopefully will, you know, show his face at some point. I miss him. Um, you've yeah. got Ranger at the three spot. Taiwan Walker is going to take the fourth spot. And I would assume Bailey Falter has the fifth spot locked up. You definitely if, not got six? Oh, no, not if Andrew Painter isn't on the roster. If if Andrew Painter is on the roster, I think they go six man, and I think Bailey Falter is that sixth man. Um, yeah. But I don't. I don't think Mike Plasmeyer will make the opening day roster. That being said, you could do way worse for like a seventh or eighth starter down on the on the depth chart, right? Like you know, it used to be that the Cole Irvins of the world were kind of like hey, you know the. the, the pod. The, the the but the first guy that you call on right like that that was you know the fir- the first man up now you know Mike Plasmeyer who's a very similar build to Irvin um is like seventh or eighth on the depth chart depth chart and you've got you know a lot of guys ahead of him so you know that that is kind of nice to take comfort in that being said huge shout out to Dave Dabrowski on that move last year Austin wins for Michael Plasmeyer was like. Yeah, I, I at the time I was like, oh yeah, this guy's like not bad at all. I think he has like double digits career walks in the minors, which is crazy. Like we're wow. talking like eight hundred innings and double digit walks, like some crazy, crazy st- statistic like that. I was like, this guy's really, really good command. Like obviously was just getting shelled in the PCL, but that's just how it works uh, because balls just fly out of nowhere over there. But um he came over here, had an amazing year in AAA, and, you know, that's that's nice to have. It's nice to have that kind of guy that can eat you some innings uh, down at AAA. So so he'll he'll be in a good spot there. Absolutely. And um, Jose Alvarado, 102 mile an hour, straight, straight, straight out of the – straight out of winter. Whatever. Straight into his first outing, 102 mile. Please take it easy, Jose. You know, I don't want to – I don't want to see his elbow blowing up. And now wow. throwing a curveball. I mean, he's he's thrown a curveball before, but like throwing it accurately with like actual command and real utilization is is a foreign concept. Uh, so I yeah. mean, just make the nastiest pitcher in the game even nastier. And what are you yeah, going to do about that? Him going down was maybe the best thing that's ever happened to him. You know, well, just the way he's come back from coming back from from AAA has it's has, the philosophy. It's, it's just been unreal. That's what it is, though. It's it's the the biometrics combined with this philosophy of just throw strikes and let your stuff do all the work for you is like it it feels so simple. But sometimes the simplest things are the least obvious yeah. to 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 guys that are you know so talented and so um, you know they have to feel like they're working hard in order to really I don't know in order to, to really feel like they're making the most of their opportunity, when in reality, simplification is sometimes just the best route. Yeah. And look what it's done for Jose yeah. Alvarado. Look what it's done I for mean, Jose Alvarado. Oy, oy, oy. He's been unbelievable. Um, in terms of the, the, the batting side of things, it's, it's what we sort of expected. They're all they're already looking dialed in. Alec Bohm, like I said, you know, it's <laughs> I know it's only spring, but oh, man, this, this guy, I can't help but get excited. I, I and I, I'm loving it, and I'm I'm excited for his year coming up because, honestly, as I oh, was it Jack Fritz tweeted out joke maybe jokingly, but I wouldn't think it was a joke. It could be a 25 plus home run year for Alec Bowman. He's added the muscle, he's added the pop, he's got more of his angle, high angle swing to him now, and he looks so confident. A different player that walked into spring this time last year on the back of a terrible year, you know. Alec Bar, <laughs> just excited. I'm knocking I'm excited. on some wood, man. I am knocking on all the wood in the world because, look, it already wasn't. And I mentioned this on our our deleted pod. 
which oh, yeah, that, is the greatest that. thing ever. Uh, we'll talk about that another day. But I, 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 I talked about this on there. We really didn't – it was lost in the shuffle last year, but we, we really didn't talk about how Alec Bohm, like, very quietly was, like, a top six contact hitter in baseball last year. Just, you know, casually, uh, like, 290 expected batting average on the season, which is, like, absolutely crazy. With the shift being gone, those doubles that, you know, I'm sure maybe the, the outfield will still align the same way, but those 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 caught baseballs when he was slicing yeah. the ball opposite field and it just happened to land in somebody's glove, those are probably going to land this year. Um, and more than that, I mean, with a little bit more elevation and a little bit more pull power, Alec Bohm probably becomes a very, very good hitter. Um, just given how, how good of a hitter he is already and how contact prone he is with more power and a little bit more lift. I mean, that is a very dangerous bat. Um, he, he's and I a guy who like, could be top five in the lineup by the end of the year. I really think that by the end of the year, and I, I'm probably getting way ahead of myself here, but I, I really do think at the end of the year, he probably is hitting out of the three hole. Um, and it, look, a lot has to happen for that to come to fruition. But when you think about it, the Phillies, really need a right-handed batter somewhere in between um you know obviously it's going to start turner to harper when when harper gets back but then they need a right-handed batter to separate Schwarber and harper and that's either going to be jt real muto or alec bone like that's those are your two choices it's not going to be reese hoskins just because you know that power is better suited lower in the lineup so it's either Alec Bohm or JT Real Muto. And honestly, at this point, Bohm probably has the more offensive upside, which is like, you know, you just, you keep your fingers crossed. But oh, everything crossed. Everything if every, crossed. If everything goes to plan and the metrics are not lying to us, he really should be one of the better hitters in this lineup this year. And that is really exciting. Unless, you know, Nick Castellanos comes back and absolutely becomes MVP Castellanos, in which case, sure, he can be the right-headed hitter between Schwarber and Harper. But like, yeah, or, or JT explodes or Reese explodes. That's, that, that, that's the, the depth for oh, the I'm quality sorry. we have top, in our team. Top 10 MVP candidate, JT Real Muto? Is that, wow. is that who we're talking about? You know, the best catcher in baseball. You know, you know oh, him, right? Yeah, you know, you know yeah, the yeah, one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you okay. know and uh, he oh, started yeah. spring nicely as well. Uh, Trey Turner has just been Trey Turner. Love watching him already. I just love everything about the guy you know his his style he makes it look effortless like the yeah. way, like his con like he's one of the best contact swingers i've ever seen you know i don't watch much baseball outside of the field so watching trey turner properly i have already wow it's effortless you know plays with a smile a little bit of a swag uh he's gonna be he's gonna be lead off isn't he surely him yeah. and then schwarber you know schwarber's gonna be hitting two run bombs instead of solos now Getting yeah. Trey Turner I, on base. Honestly, one of my favorite lineup iterations also looks like Trey Turner to JT because that Ooh. becomes an impossible combination to double up. They're so fast. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I feel like feel like that's a really, really good one too. And obviously, when Bryce Harper gets back, he probably sits in the two hole. Um, just given how the lineup shakes out, but I mean. Who's to say? I really, but I like that idea. And, you know, Schwarber is probably going to hit second to start. But who knows how things end up looking. Uh, I would really like to get Kyle Schwarber a little further down in the lineup where he can <laughs> rack up some RBIs. But, um, you know, I can't, you can't really, you, you can't set this lineup up in a bad way. You really no, can't. It. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty fun to maneuver. I'm not going to lie. It's it's got it's got versatility. You can yeah, you can do a number of things with this lineup right now. Uh Reese is back getting some hits. Um yeah, the regulars look dialed in. Castellanos' his swing has changed a little bit. Yeah, and, and the, I'm not judging Castellanos at all until we get to the season because even spring, uh, you know, Castellanos it's just see what he does when it matters. Um yeah. but those bench spots. Let's let's start with our man. Let's start with our man, Scotty Kingery, because yes, the Kingery our? comeback, the Kingery comeback. Now he, I know, I know, it's only spring, but but he's having a nice spring, Alex. I'm watching his abs more than anybody else because I'm rooting for him hard right now. Four hits so far, three walks, one RBI, one stolen base. Not a lot of swing and miss contact. His swing looks totally transformed to what it was. 
His confidence looks really high. Rob Thompson is giving him a lot of opportunities. He said in the interview, he, if Scott can get that bad sorted, because his defense is fine. We know about it. He's got versatility. Great utility, man. Gets his bat sorted. I think he won't make the opening day roster, but I think he's certainly in the line to come up if, if something unfortunate happens to one of the regulars. I'm not saying Scotty Kingery everyday starter, uh, but in terms of a bench, he's the spring he's having, the the, the signs he's showing so far, hey, uh, you know, he's, he's he doesn't look far away. He looks like a new, well, he looks like the, the sort of player of old. The pop's not quite there still, but the contact's good. The, the 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 walks are good. His abs. He's definitely a player who who again, he's he's fighting for that spot. He wants a bench place. He wants to force the issue, and he's really showing that. Uh, I've been impressed with Scott King. Every ab, I'm like, come on, Scotty, this one, just get on base. He's doing the business so far. What have you made of uh, Kingery's spring so far? That's where I'm at too. I feel like he's not. He's probably not making the opening day roster. Um, but he's definitely keeping himself in the conversation, which is great. And obviously, everybody should want to see Scott Kingery succeed. He's a part of the team that you're rooting for. Why wouldn't you want to see him succeed? But I also, I am a little concerned. There hasn't been a lot of hard contact from him. It looks like a lot of his contact has been very, you know, soft or, uh, you know, just well-placed ground balls you know, lazy flies, things like that. The play discipline is good. That is a real big plus, I feel like. And and, and look, that can undo itself. And I'm not really, you know, I haven't been paying attention to the competition he's been facing really because um, he's not necessarily at the forefront of my, of my <laughs> watching purview. But um, I do feel like the, the, the play discipline has been a lot stronger, which is important. Um, and I, I also like that they've kind of started putting him at multiple places uh, in the field again. Uh, you know, they kept him mostly at second base last year. And, uh, you know, obviously it didn't help nor hinder his bat. Um, so, yeah. you know, I, I like that they're getting him re-versatiled, as it were. Um, and, yeah, I think, you know, another year in AAA really could be could be good for him. And he is definitely setting himself up to, you know, if someone goes down, God forbid, uh, to be one of those first guys that gets called upon, which is which is good. I think that that is uh, that's good for him because uh, you know he's still going to have a career after whatever happens this year. Yeah, yeah probably yeah. the Phillies buying him out of his contract. Um, so you know, I I hope nothing but the best for him, and I I love how much support I've seen on Phillies Twitter. Yeah, big for time. Him. I think that's great. Big time, and I think everybody knows that. The, the contract given to him was just crazy at the time. And, you know, a lot of pressure on the kid. And then COVID wiped him out. You know, he was never yeah. the same after that period. So I'm hoping for a comeback in the sense of it'd be great to see him back on the bench. It'd be great to see him get some ABs. And then who knows from then on. Uh, another bench player who's really been impressed in this spring so far, Edmundo Souza, with power like I never knew he had. He's He's been crushing the ball. Uh, two home runs, which have gone gone far, nearly out the ballpark. Four hundred forty-one uh, feet the other day. Yeah, insane. Where did that come from? That insane. like I, I thought four hundred eleven was a lot for him, but like four hundred forty-one feet. That's like light tower power. That's like that's good stuff. Um, I look spring everything aside. I really one of my favorite Phillies acquisitions of the last, you know, just given what they had to give up and given the kind of player they've received in return. Um, you know, I loved Jojo Romero, you know, mm. more than anybody, really. He was more than just a, you know, a guy on the team. He was I'd like to consider him an acquaintance at the very most a friend. So, um, you know, really sad to see him go. That being said, you know, wish nothing but the best for him but to get a player like Edmundo Sosa who was like one of the biggest anomalies um in the sport in 2021 just because he was putting up sprint speed numbers outs above average numbers and then exit velocity numbers up there with like Byron Buxton which is yeah. crazy um 
to see him now come into camp and showcase this kind of power with obviously the glove that's never going to quit. He's got probably one of the best Unbelievable gloves. Unbelievable glove, isn't it? Gold um, glove material. It, it, truly. I mean, one of the best defenders in the game, for sure. Um, yeah. And obviously the sample size is, 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 is not there, but you can just see it when you watch him play. Um, he, he is a um, freak defensively. Um, and then with, with speed like he has, that is so much versatility to put on a bench. Arguably could be considered for, you know, a little bit more of an increased role um, at this point, but, you know, and they're looking for that for him by throwing him in center field and by, you know, trying all these things, but he's a really good baseball player. Um, and I really, I would not be surprised to see him factor in a little bit more this season and perhaps find an increased role as the year goes on. And I'm not sure what has to happen in order for that to take place, but you know, there's a couple of, that he can battle with out there and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put anybody on the hot seat here but there there are guys out there that you know they still need to prove they're substantiating a, yep. a yeah, roster yep. spot so and, and, and don't forget sosa had a good before the injury he had a good he was having a nice hot spell before he went down in fact he was hitting he hit two free home runs in successive games again showing that power uh like you said his defense again he makes it look effortless like it's just a joy a dream to watch uh another bench player who we mentioned i think in the uh deleted pod as it were um who's making a real case is uh jake cave Woo! real good week and a half so far from him he's yeah well, i i never heard of him obviously before until he signed here and then watching him for the first time at the moment again looks uh looks like a player who will be ready to fit in potentially I'd say Brandon Marsh has that starting role at center field, but a possible backup for Brandon Marsh being Jake Cave, he's certainly uh, pushing that case. I mean, he, what is important about his presence is that he adds a little bit of versatility to what the lineup can look like without Bryce Harper. Um, you know, being able to put a, a decent glove, he has a really strong arm too, um, which is which is good to yeah. know. Um, but uh, being able to put a good glove in right field allows you to kind of open up the, the the DH spot a little bit more, you know, throwing Castellanos there, um, you know, giving Reese Hoskins, I guess, a, you know, more time at first base in that scenario. But, um, you know, they'll really be able to shift the DH around and having Cave allows them to do that a little bit more and be a little bit more matchup based depending on where they're putting Derek Hall. Should he make the opening day roster? I don't see why he wouldn't at this point um he is also having a really good spring he is, um, he is but yeah. uh the one thing about jake cave that i will say yesterday exposed a real weakness in his swing um that i'm assuming they're going to get right to work with but I, I don't know if you if you saw it um he went up against oh, the name escapes me now a pirate's lefty of which there were like eight in yesterday's game, so this is not very helpful for. I anybody. wasn't a pub, Alex. Um, I'm sorry, I but, can't help you. Oh, game. Okay. I'm sorry. It's it's it was okay. a Saturday night, Alex. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen. So yesterday, the Pirates brought in a lefty reliever. I, he has a name that starts with an H. Can't remember his name. Um, my fault. But threw three straight outside and down sliders to Jake Cave, at which he swung at all of them three consecutively. Um, granted, guy had a great slider, but a bit of a hole in his swing and i was really i was jake cave pilled up until that point i mean i put out a tweet jake cave, up until a couple days ago had one batted ball below 100 miles per hour it was like a single that wow. was yeah. like 83 off the bat but then the other five batted balls were 100.5 hard contact ball. he really he's hitting the ball really hard this spring um and that is very interesting um because you know He's always been a guy. He had a great like first two years in the bigs combined, and then really fell off. But mostly because Minnesota has always had a crowded outfield, um, so he really didn't get a lot of chances in Minnesota. I'm really interested to see why the Phil because the Phillies they did not sign him. They claimed him off of waivers, and he is owed a salary, like a real salary. Oh, okay. It's not league minimum. It's a real salary. Um, and, and they claimed him off of waivers, so obviously there is something there that they feel like they can work with. Whether that's you know maybe his glove is just really good or he projects really well defensively, but 
the hard contact suggests that there is definitely something there in his, his offensive makeup that they think that they can do something with. And that intrigues me a lot. And I think right now, in terms of the, the outfield race, he is definitely – he's beaten a lot of guys. He is definitely beating Dalton Guthrie. Um, you know, he is definitely yeah, beating yeah. – uh, he, he's beaten a lot of guys. So I'm, I'm excited to see if he can keep that up um, because he's definitely, he's caught my eye for sure. Yeah. And then other ones that have impressed me, Clemens has had a nice start and uh, Weston Wilson, who I knew nothing about until he hit Neither did I. first home <laughs> run and uh, he's carrying on. He's having a real nice spring as well. Uh, who else has caught your eye, Alex, in this first week and a half in the Phil's camp? You mentioned them. I, uh, Weston Wilson, Shocking. Um, I knew nothing about him, and yet here he is playing every position on God's green earth yeah. and playing it really well. He made an outstanding play at third base yesterday. I mean, he is I haven't he's seen very it. interesting. Um, and, and look, I, I think he's probably, if he doesn't make the opening day roster, he, it's a long shot. He's probably going to stick in AAA, and that's interesting to me. I really want to see how that unfolds. Um, Cody Clemens also has, has looked really good. I honestly was not bullish on him. Um, but you know, I think he's, his power is definitely intriguing me for sure. Um, it's really funny. Uh, somebody on Twitter, I think it was Rob, uh, Rob or if you don't follow him, he is a genius just statistically write some of the best stuff for baseball perspective prospectus. You if you that. don't follow him, but yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> been a long day already uh but he, he writes some great stuff give him a follow he's a, he's a really great guy um but he he tweeted something really funny nick maton and cody clemens have the exact same load in their stance and and they have the the same like stance as well uh which is very funny that they were included in the same trade for one another and both of them mm. hit lefty it's just very really interesting makes you think a little bit um but you know clemens is is, is very interesting I will always and forever be on this train of Simone Muziati is like so much better than he'll ever get credit for. Uh, and it's just that he hasn't stayed healthy. Um, you know, and Matt Winkleman is also on this train. We bring up Matt every single podcast, but he's also yeah. just the Another, greatest of all time. Fantastic uh, he's fantastic. Um, but Simone Muziati is, is, is arguably a top 10 prospect in the system and should be ranked probably higher than that he just has a hard time staying healthy but i mean he is a playmaker he is a difference maker uh, you know he's fast he's got an amazing glove makes a lot of contact um and has showcased some power at the end of last year so where is he, is he really AA or triple a at the moment he's gonna be triple a this year so oh see i can't really, wait to go to lehigh valley on the, the he and johan ross week. are gonna make one of the I'm, best defensive outfields i'm gonna lehigh see valley has ever seen. i'm gonna see him weston wilson rojas there's some some picture. I'm it's see true. these guys I'm watching now that I'm getting excited about. I'm like, yeah, these guys are going to be in AAA when I'm when I'm going to go there and see them. So now you see why I love minor league baseball. Yeah, is, I'm get yeah, I'm, really... I'm getting there, Alex. You know, after my Plus, visit in January to Lehigh and and now going to see a game, I'm 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 excited. You know, I'm watching these guys going and be seeing you guys soon and watching them progress as well. Uh, of course, Scotty Kingery will be there. Uh, probably will be uh, with the one man fan club going, Scotty. I mean, but you're going to see there's a lot of guys that are going to be there that that are legitimate you know they have a case yeah. to make the major league club mark appel is probably going to be there um you know you're going to see michael plasmeyer you're going to see who knows what's going to happen with the rotation you know further into the season maybe bailey falter um you know goes goes down if andrew painter is is really succeeding um and they don't feel a need to you know limit his innings all that much um you know maybe bailey falter goes down he'll be there and he is a triple-A legend. Um, Bailey Falter is, like, one of the best triple-A pitchers to ever exist. Um, yeah. He really he, – he nails it. Um, but, like, you'll see um, – who else? Maybe Cody Clemens will be there. Um, you know, lots of guys that, like, now I feel like the, the, the fan base is getting to know. Johan Rojas is going to be there. Simone Muziati is going to be and there. He's been excited. Like, Some of those outfield plays Rojas has made has been unreal. You know, neat. Wow. Oh, and you know who else? Carlos De La Cruz. Who oh, is, what a big guy. What, what a, a giant. And he can crush that. He can mash the ball. But that's the thing. These are, you know, these are guys that, you know, a couple of years ago, 
nobody was really talking about that now could be seen as real difference makers on this club. Carlos De La Cruz learned to hit out of nowhere, by the way, um, which I'm attributing to, again, this remarkable uh, leap in, in uh, just organizational depth and, yeah. uh, you know, organizational knowledge. Um, but he learned to hit out of nowhere. It was long thought that he would never make enough contact for his stature and his power to matter. Lo and behold, he last year hit over, I think, 300 across two levels in the minors, which who could have ever predicted? And now, like, hitting home runs in big league spring training, which is, to me, already a W for, for, for that. Absolutely. Case. But, yeah. like, he's now getting reps at first base. There is a real chance that he could be the guy when Reese Hoskins likely departs. He could be the guy that they look at on the depth chart and say, hey, if, if Kyle Schwarber or Nick Castellanos or Alec Bohm can't handle first base or maybe Alec Bohm's glove is too good at third base, maybe he's the guy. I, I don't know, but I, yeah, I... That's an interesting one. Yeah, it's one it's to keep really, an eye on. So he's another guy that... He, Johan Rojas, if Johan Rojas can learn to hit, I mean, good Lord, uh, that is a that's a really special player. You want oh. to talk about, you know, whew. He yeah, really that, could yeah two Superman grabs in the outfield already in spring. And like three, three or four even. Hey, he yeah. is, he's been insane. Like, yeah, he, he's exciting. He he's a player. Yeah, like you said, who can he get stole sixty two bases it. last year. So you know, Unreal. if he can just get on base, he will. You know, he'll just steal so many bags. I mean, the guy he's had two already, like, hasn't he? I know he's definitely had one. I think like he's had that. two. He, he swiped like forty three consecutive bases. And with these new rules now, year. this pickoff rule, he should be. Stealing. He'd run rampant. He'd run rampant. Yeah. Like... So the fails lose J T. Schwarber, Turner, Soto, Stubbs, Walker, Alvarado, and Suarez this week to the uh, World Baseball Classic. Just come home healthy, boys. I am, you know, I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yay. Uh, Me too. <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm excited, as you all know, for Team GB and the history we're about to make in the in the competition. But I, my, you know, my mind's on those boys. I'm going to be nervous at every at bat for our fields players because I just want to see them all come back, nice and healthy. Is Gabe playing for, is Gabe playing for uh, GB? No, he's not. He's not. Okay, he, okay. He's, he's fitness, Probably because he was. Uh, yeah. His he fitness was, was an issue at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, Gabe's had some good outings for the Phils, and he's had two walks uh, and a ground. Another run. guy, another guy that I I really think they could uh, look to for the first base uh, oh. vacancy ah. should it should it occur. I would uh, a big year for Gabe Rincon. It's not only he is. because of what he brings for us this side of the, of the pond, and you know being a UK representative, but he's got real potential. Real, he's getting a potential. lot. He's getting a lot of attention. He, and with, he is, and I hope he's not listening because I don't want to psych him out. But uh, friend he, of the pod, of course, he's been on the pod before. You know when he was course. when he was first drafted, and with the uh, losing so many players to the World Baseball Classic, we're going to see a few more fringe players playing, especially in the split squad games. So we may see more of Gabriel, and I I hope he gets that chance. I know he's taken two free walks already, but uh, I wonder if in his mind he's tempted just to let one go. You know. <laughs> Just to get ahead and, and get I would away. love that for me, just so that I can get a get a real because the, the big thing with him when he was drafted was you know his his advanced batted ball data was really good. Um and I would love to be able to take a look at that. Uh because that that yeah, would be nice. I'm, I'm excited. He's getting a lot of I'm, attention. I'm really excited. Uh, a quick one, Alex, as well. Friday night's game was two hours twenty-two minutes with including what 11 pitching changes, 19 hits, seven home runs. What are, what are you making the rules? For me personally, I'm getting used to it still. Uh, at, at nighttime, it's going to come in handy because the games are going to be finished by probably 2 o'clock in the morning, which means I'll still get a eh, pretty decent amount of sleep. Uh, but what are you making of the new rules so far, especially the pitch clock, which is causing uh, all the controversy at the moment? I love them. I love them. I yeah. do. I think that uh, – I think – a lot of people are going to be, I mean, you make any big change in any game and people are going to get, you know, whatever about it. But I sincerely believe that the pitch clock is the answer that they have been looking for, for pace of play. Um, and I think that it, it makes a ton of sense. 15 seconds is not a small amount of time. 
it is a perfectly reasonable amount of time to, you know, get set and get the baseball and just throw it. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I do think that they, some things need to change in terms of how they explain these things during the game. So it needs to become more obvious what is going on uh, just so that it's more viewer friendly. What is going on? Like who makes the infraction, what the penalty is, et cetera, et cetera. But I think that all this time wasting and all of this mind gaming and things of that nature, like it, it was about time. It was about time that it went because it was becoming too much. And now that that self-expression you know the the whatever the fixing uniforms or, or drawing something on the plate or anything like that that can all be done when you take your swing start mm-hmm. showboating yeah. more like start making more of like start making more of it start bat flipping more make that product more exciting but the 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 ultimate the ultimate goal of the pitch clock is just get the baseball and go and that to me i think that is a better yeah, version it, of it, the game it's more action you know, and yeah. the bigger bases, the shift gone, they're expecting more balls in play. The shift gone in action. The shift leaving isn't even like isn't even that big of a deal. We just saw the other day there you can still shift in the outfield. Yeah, the you twins, can still the twins yes, own, the, against yeah. Joey Gallo. The the I was it the oh, I can't remember what team it was. A, a, a team brought an out the you know, an outfielder from left field over to right field to take part in an outfield shift, which is still welcomed in the game you can still do that granted you leave the entirety of left field open so if mm. somebody hits an opposite field anything you know uh, yeah you basically can see the it's run through the gap it's a double or a triple isn't it it's probably a or an inside the park inside the park like, depending it, on who it is yeah depending on who it who is hitting yeah so i i mean it's really not that big of a deal and people are freaking out over it but it's not that much of a strategic difference and you can still have you know once once the ball is in play guys are allowed to move so you know you can you can go wherever you want so you can if you think it's going to be a a, a, you know if it's a shift happy or a pull happy left-handed hitter as soon as that ball gets released from the pitcher's glove you can start running over like it, it yeah it doesn't matter so i don't know i think i think people are making such a big deal out of all these changes that ultimately are going to be really really good for the game of baseball in my opinion i think by even april and early may people would have forgotten about it the yeah. the rule changes you know they'll be on to something we'll be all on to something else uh right. like i said in the middle of the night for us over here the, these games finishing early are going to be a godsend for us no more yeah. three four a.m finishes we're going to be done by what if the games are starting at quarter to 12 now which they are the new times they're going to be done by before two this is great yeah. And I also, I, I, I will say the the game ending on infractions is a bit dull. So that there probably should be some sort of ninth inning rule put in place. Um, or maybe that you get a little extra time, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in the ninth or, or, or something of that nature. The game ending on an infraction is, is, is probably yeah. the wrong choice. Um, but past that, I mean, everything feels great to me. Uh, just, personally but i know that there are a lot of other people that think very different things so oh yeah yeah and, and everyone everyone is absolutely entitled to that opinion uh, and, and has different that's the great thing about baseball everyone's got so many different ways of watching the game and what they like about the game because it is so Indeed. versatile it's such a versatile sport i love it yeah exactly and we all love it for different reasons as well which is just makes it so unique uh alex that is about it the field's about to start against the blue jays hopefully another seamless inning from zach wheeler and we'll uh i don't know the result never matters in spring does it but it's always nice to see the fields win you know you know it's it's nice to see a positive above 500 record is you know see us yeah, pop in, right. top of the grapefruit league you know grapefruit parade, league champions perhaps parade, parade that grapefruit down broad street you know it's do you remember do you remember in the was it 2021 that they were they were like 17 and three or something? Yeah, we won it, three, didn't maybe? we? And we had the worst season. I think ever. so. I think so. We did. We and won then, it. Yeah. Yeah. No, know, what was? Yeah, so. that was that was all for nothing. But it, lo- it looks like yeah. doing better in the Grapefruit League leads to because the Marlins won the Grapefruit League pennant last year, and then <laughs> they, they, they had a Marlins did, year. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, your results really do mean nothing. Uh, we will uh, we will catch up next week where we'll be about halfway through spring. We'll be at the halfway point. We'll be halfway closer to the new season. 
Uh, we got some preview pods coming up with the other, other NL least accounts. We'll have a round table. That is coming up soon. Uh, more guests lined up as well. And of course, me and Alex will be going new through spring and the start of the new season, which is right on the horizon now. Uh, but that is all. If you've watched and liked what you've seen, please hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, if you're listening on the podcast, keep listening and hopefully you're enjoying the content as well. Uh, Alex, anything else to uh, on your mind before we finish up? Ring the bell, Dave. That's the only oh, thing. Oh, yeah, ring the bell. All right. So from, I'll take it out then. From Alex, ring the bell. And from myself, Dave Shaw, ring the bell. See you guys soon. Goodbye.